Number 10. Franklin Pierce is the only president who was born in New Hampshire. He is one of the eight presidents from a New England state, the others being John Adams, John Quincy Adams, John F. Kennedy, and George Bush from Massachusetts, Chester Arthur and Calvin Coolidge from Vermont, and George W. Bush from Connecticut. Number 9. Pierce was an alcoholic. His parents were both heavy drinkers, and he picked up the habit at a young age. At various points he tried to stop, but always returned to the bottle, often to cope with personal tragedies such as the loss of his children. After losing renomination by his own party, he reportedly said, there's nothing left to do but to get drunk. He died at only 64 from cirrhosis of the liver. Number 8. Benjamin Pierce, Franklin's father, served in the Revolutionary War under George Washington. He was also a politician and held various offices throughout New Hampshire, eventually becoming the state's governor. He was good friends with Andrew Jackson, who often visited while Franklin was a young man. These visits from Jackson sparked an early interest in politics for young Franklin. Number 7. Pierce served in the Mexican-American War, but many didn't consider him a war hero. On two occasions, he missed combat due to accidents right before battle. His political opponents argued he was a coward. During the election of 1852, his former military superior and Whig opponent, Winfield Scott, described him as nothing greater than, quote, the hero of a many well-fought bottles. In contrast, Ulysses S. Grant, also a veteran of the war and political opposite of Pierce, described him as, quote, a gentleman and a man of courage. Number 6. Pierce and his wife Jane couldn't have been more opposite. Pierce was outgoing, talkative, and interested in politics. Jane was shy, reclusive, and despised anything political. Pierce was a heavy drinker, not very religious, and a Democrat. Jane was a teetotaler, daughter of a minister, and from a family of Whigs. The two were in conflict through most of their marriage. While Pierce tried to appease Jane at times, his ambition and bad habits generally got the best of him. Number 5. While Pierce was a Northern Democrat, he was derisively called a doughface, a term used for Northern Democrats with Southern sympathies. He claimed that though slavery was immoral, it was also legal and constitutional and therefore must be defended. Like Fillmore and Buchanan, most historians criticize him for showing favoritism to the South during times of sectional crisis, such as when newly acquired territories were being admitted to the Union and in the enforcement of fugitive slave laws. Number 4. All three of Pierce's children died young. Franklin Jr. died in infancy. Frank Robert died at age 4 from epidemic typhus. And their last surviving son, Benjamin, was killed in a train accident when he was 11, just weeks after Pierce had won the presidency. The death sent Pierce into a depression, affected his performance as president, and strained his relationship with Jane. Number 3. At his inauguration, Pierce affirmed the oath of office with his hand on a law book. He is the only president to affirm the oath rather than to swear it, and one of the few not to use a Bible. Pierce never explained his reason, but it's believed he thought his son's death was a sign that he was in bad standing with God. Number 2. During the Civil War, Pierce remained loyal to the Union, yet opposed to Abraham Lincoln at every turn. He never supported the war, publicly called for peace, held private meetings in effort to work towards peace, and chastised Lincoln for his suspension of habeas corpus. One of many conspiracy theories claimed Pierce was working with pro-Confederate forces to overthrow Lincoln and set himself up as president. Some of these theories were investigated, and none were found to be true. Number 1. One of Pierce's closest friends was novelist Nathaniel Hawthorne. The two men first met in college and remained lifelong friends. In 1852, Hawthorne wrote a biography glamorizing Pierce to help him get elected. In their later years, the two would travel together. 
In 1863, Hawthorne dedicated his latest release to Pierce. Pierce was extremely controversial for his stances during the war, but Hawthorne fought his editor to keep the dedication. He said doing otherwise would be a betrayal of his friend. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and donating on Patreon. Donations from $2 to $15 a month help towards more frequent uploads. Patreon link in the description below.